Welcome to Baking School with Jamie. This is a training series I've been dreaming of developing for years. Over the past two years, I have published my first two cookbooks. And my goal with those is to help teach you how to cook from scratch in a simple way and in small bite-sized pieces. You can head over to bakingschoolwithjamie.com if you wanna get the printables and recipes that go along with every lesson in this new series. Every lesson, we are gonna come up with a fantastic simple recipe for you to do alongside me. Watch until the end of this lesson because today we're learning how to bake simple blueberry muffins that are amazing and can also be really healthy. The explosive popularity of these cookbooks points me to one very clear conclusion. We could all use some help, some serious help, when it comes to learning how to cook from scratch and to feed our families well on a budget and food that's healthy. And a huge part of my focus is in teaching you how to bake because it can change everything about how you run your kitchen and the foods you serve to your family. I know these lessons very well because it's only in the past 10 years the last six years really, that I have learned truly how to bake. I came into marriage with zero cooking skills and I have had to fight hard for every single skill I've learned in the kitchen. Today, I bake 100% of our bread products from scratch for our family of nine, from homemade protein waffles, to sandwich bread, to pasta, to cinnamon rolls, and more. But it was a lot of daily, weekly baby steps to get there. It didn't happen overnight. Baking is a lot more simple than you think, and each and every new recipe you try teaches you something new about the baking process. I know that from personal experience. So in this series, we're gonna focus on simple step-by-step -step tips for learning how to bake in just 10 minutes a week. All right, so here's what you can expect from this new series. We have seven seasons or courses planned out so far. Now, these might change in ebb and flow as I get into teaching each course, but so far, here's what we have planned out. Course number one is the one you're starting right now, which is quick breads. Course number two, we're gonna cover cookies, cakes, and granola bars. Uh, course number three is yeast breads. That one's gonna be fun. Course number four is sourdough. We're gonna tackle sourdough. Course number five is pies and tarts. Course number six is laminated pastries. And finally, course number seven, grinding your own grains. Oh, that one's gonna be fun. Each week, you're gonna find a new video with teaching from me that lasts about 10 minutes, maybe 15. And then you're gonna bake a recipe with me for about five minutes. And then you're gonna get the printable download of that recipe we made together so you can go try it out yourself. If you give me just 10 minutes a week, you're gonna be a baking pro in no time. So this first course, like I said, is focused on quick breads, which is an excellent place to start because learning how to bake quick breads paves the way for harder techniques like yeast bread and sourdough, which I know so many of you wanna tackle. Quick breads are gonna teach you the basics of baking in quick and fun recipes so that when you're ready, you can jump into these harder things, making your own amazing pie crust, doing sourdough. We're gonna lay the foundation this season. So we are gonna jump in today with what the main ingredients and tools that you are gonna need for baking. Don't worry, it's pretty simple. Okay, first up, choosing ingredients. All right, here's the deal. Your baking is gonna thank you and your family is gonna thank you then when you buy better quality baking ingredients. And don't worry, as you start to learn to bake from scratch and replace store-bought versions, you will save money in the process. So we're gonna elevate our ingredients a little bit, but overall you will save money learning how to bake these things at home. So you wanna get real butter, real maple syrup, real vanilla extract, high quality cocoa, and so on. I learned this lesson really early on. When we were first married, I took a bunch of cake decorating courses and I started making my own frosting and homemade fondant. And this lesson on buying high quality ingredients was important because I tried to skimp and buy the generic store brand of powdered sugar and it bit me with a ruined lump of homemade fondant. It, it, it was terrible. And so sometimes it's cheaper for a reason. It's, it's cut in with other ingredients, it's just not as high quality. So let's talk about some individual ingredients. Choosing butter is up first. I will be honest, I'm not always that picky with butter. 
you will get better, more flavorful results with a higher quality grass-fed butter, but I know butter's expensive right now. Uh, many bakers, though, are very picky about only baking with unsalted butter, since you're gonna be adding salt into your recipes. It, it's very much a thing, but I almost always only have salted butter on hand. It works out fine. I have never ruined a, a recipe by using salted butter. Uh, if you do find your baking's coming out a little too salty, back off on the salt or start buying unsalted butter instead. And some specialty recipes we'll get into later, like pastries, will call for European style butter that has a higher fat content. Uh, so Azure sells a great one for that. Um, but this works well for pastries and laminating doughs, but the recipe will usually indicate if you need kind of a specialty butter. Okay, vanilla extract is next. Okay, ladies, throw out your bottles of cheap imitation vanilla. First, it's junk. Second, it tastes like junk. And I know, I know, real vanilla extract is costly, but you're only gonna use a little bit at a time, and it's also super, super easy to make your own and make it a lot more inexpensive. So you wanna be using real vanilla extract. You can actually see my video on making homemade vanilla extract because it takes like three minutes. I mean, if you can pour into a bottle, you can make your own homemade vanilla extract. The next ingredient to talk about is eggs. You're gonna go through a lot of eggs when you're baking. And some recipes, here's a great tip, you need room temperature eggs. My main recipe I make th for this uh, that calls for room temperature is mayo. And room temperature eggs are very important to get mayo to set properly. Now, I never remember to take the eggs out of the fridge early enough. So to get them room temperature, just set those eggs in warm water, for three to five minutes until the egg is no longer cold to the touch. It works every time. So that's a fantastic tip if you come across a recipe that calls for room temperature eggs. The next one we're gonna talk about is salt. Salt is very important for baked goods. It gives you the flavor. So you're gonna to wanna to throw out your processed fake white salt and you're gonna get some good sea salt, some real salt that's got different colors in it. My absolute favorite brand is Redmond's Real Salt. I buy it in 10 or 25 pound bags, which lasts, a 25 pound bag lasts more than a whole year for us, and you can get it at a much better price. Azure also sells a really good sea salt, and Costco sells a tub of it for a very good price too. You don't have to get super expensive salt, but that is one ingredient that will give you so much more flavor and depth when you upgrade. All right, the next one is sugar. The type of sugar you use is going to largely depend on your taste and preference. Of course, we've got your basic white sugar, brown sugar, but there's also granulated honey, coconut sugar, succinant, and other natural sweeteners. Then we talk about liquid uh, sweeteners. We've got raw honey, maple syrup, and more. Sweeteners are a good place to experiment and try out different options. And in our recipes, I will give you different sweetener ideas. So today we're making uh, muffins. You can just make with plain white sugar, or I'm gonna give you some alternatives if you wanna use a more natural sugar. Okay, flour, this is a big one, but actually we're gonna be talking about flour in the next lesson. So we're not gonna get into that at all today. Wait for next week, we'll get into all of the things with flour. Baking powder and baking soda, we are gonna go into in-depth on those in lesson number three, as well as buttermilk when we get into the real nitty gritty about quick breads. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the equipment. Thankfully, baking is fairly easy. You don't need a ton of tools or devices. However, there are some really good handy tools that can help make your life easier. I have a lot of things I use in my kitchen, but I have slowly built these up year after year by asking for them for my birthday, Mother's Day, finding them at thrift stores or on sale. I never had good pans. Good pans make a big difference, but it took me many years to build up my good pans. All right, so for yeast breads, sourdough, or pastries, you'll need to slowly invest in some other tools, most of which are not expensive, but we will cover all of those in future courses. Today, we're gonna chat about what you'll need for the upcoming nine episodes of this season. Number one is measuring spoons and cups. Now, this might seem easy, but I have been using the solid metal measuring spoons and cups for years. I have a set of each, they get rewashed in between recipes and they are just absolutely amazing. If you're still using old little tiny plastic ones, these are just a really nice upgrade. I also have a simple set of anchor glass measuring cups. I should have got them down. I have a one cup, two cup and four cup and I have a couple of each of those. All right, next up is rubber spatulas. I have about five of these. The other four are all in the dishwasher right now. They are my best friends for quick breads. You use them to mix, scrape out every last drop out of that bowl, 
This is what I use 99% of the time when I'm mixing or doing anything that involves quick breads. You can get them super cheap, Walmart, Amazon, they're fantastic. Next thing we're gonna cover is your muffin tins. This simple trusty muffin tin is essential for making a ton of different quick breads. I have two so that I can make two dozen at once. These are my favorite ones, the USA Pan uh, brand, absolute favorites. Now I wanna talk about these handy little guys. These are silicone muffin liners. These are not essential, but if you're using an older stickier muffin tin where your stuff just never comes out, these can be a lifesaver and they're such a quick cleanup. So you take one out, plop it in to your muffin tin, put your batter, and they just come out like butter. You can get these Amazon, Walmart, super cheap. All right, next is a full-size sheet pan with a lip. Here's what I'm talking about. These are used in my kitchen for everything, from making french fries, to roasting vegetables, to baking hamburger buns, to scones, and more. These are my favorite USA pans, uh, and I recently found this set of two at Costco for a really good price. So watch sales as USA pans go on sale usually multiple times a year, but they're gonna be a really good priced, high quality, like some pans can be 60, 70 bucks a piece. These are nowhere near that price. All right, next up, if you are using older, stickier pans, is to get a silicone baking mat. You can get these really inexpensively. They go right on to your sheet and they make a huge difference in the non-stickability, cleanup, all of that. So this is a nice little hack if you're not ready to upgrade your pans yet. Next up, we have got biscuit cutters. While you do not technically have to have biscuit cutters and can try to substitute with other things, there is nothing like a biscuit cutter for getting the right rise on biscuits because you are cutting it perfectly. And um, you can get a set for around 10 bucks with all the different sizes. So this is another one that is well worth the investment. All right, I think this might be our last one. We have got loaf pans. A good set of loaf pans will give you so many different uses in your kitchen. From banana bread to zucchini bread, loaf breads we're gonna talk about. Um, you can also do, I do my sandwich loaves in here and more. The most common sizes are eight and a half by four and a half. But my favorite, these ones right here are nine by five. You can always use a loaf pan that's a little bit bigger than your recipe calls for, but you can't use one that's a little bit smaller than what your recipe calls for. All right, now stick around for a few more minutes while we make healthy and easy blueberry muffins together. And then make sure you head over to bakingschoolwithjamie.com to download the printable sheet from today's lesson with all the equipment and ingredients that you need in an easy quick sheet with links for you and to download the recipe for today's lesson for free. Just head over to bakingschoolwithjamie.com. And now let's step over here and start making the blueberry muffins. Okay, first thing we have to do, of course, is get our apron on. I never actually used to wear aprons, and now I actually think they're essential. Okay, so you're gonna see that side by side, I am making all-purpose flour muffins, and I'm also making spelt muffins. You'll see the difference here in a minute. I'm using white sugar in the all-purpose, and I'm using succinate in the blue in the spelt ones to show you kind of how they look and how they're a little bit different. An important step in these blueberry muffins is creaming your sugar and your butter together. You really want to cream it as long as your arm can give you because the creamier you get it, the more fluffy and airy and just delicious these muffins are going to be. You're going to beat your eggs in then. You can already see the color difference between the one that has succinate and spelt and the one on the right, which is the all-purpose flour and the white sugar. The muffins and quick breads are fantastic because you can customize them so much. Like use whatever kind of, you know, sugar or flour you have on hand. If you're gonna do a liquid sweetener, that's where it gets a little trickier, but you can look up online, Google online, how to make the difference up. The one change that I made for succinate is I did two and a half cups of spelt. I'm sorry for the spelt. I did two and a half cups of spelt versus only two cups of the all-purpose uh, because I find that you just need a little bit more flour there when you're using a whole grain or freshly ground or spelt in particular. Uh, and then I, you just saw I was lining those muffin tins with those silicone muffin liners, which can work really, really well. So I just wanted to show you the difference and we're already, look how fast that mixes together and we're already putting them in here that this muffin base also you could put in chocolate chips you could put dried cherries you don't have to do blueberries we're going to put them in my very dirty oven that very much needs to be cleaned and just 20 minutes later we have got amazing muffins i find the all-purpose in the spelt 
bake at right around the same, they take a, right about the same amount of time. We're of course gonna use a fork or you can use a knife to check and see that they're all done. Make sure that there's no gooey batter there in the middle. And these ones came out great and you're gonna see in a sec how easy it is to pop them out of these USA pans. Watch this. These are warm still. Look, there's no muffin liners. I did not spray. Actually, I think I did spray these a little bit. But these come out so amazing with the USA pans. All right, thank you so much for joining us this week for simple blueberry muffins. And make sure you return for next week's episode of Baking School with Jamie.